Well, it's one of those raw, rainy days. It happens in spring. But I've been in the basement office working for a while. Hours. I don't remember what time I started this morning. But at any rate, I need to stand up and do something break. So I figured I was going to come out here and look at one of the asparagus patches that got away from me last year. I'm pretty determined to keep it and not have to till it in or lose it. So before it comes up, hopefully, I'm going to get raking the grass and weeds and stuff out and try to mulch it really heavily and see if I'm successful. There's a lot of grass in there. I'm not certain this is going to work, but if it doesn't, that just means I'm going to have to spend time weeding this all summer to get it back under control. An asparagus patch should last and produce food for nearly two decades once established, or so I've read. However, I've also read that it doesn't like competition, and the crabgrass is a tough competitor. The first step in this process will be to rake off all the detritus and re-establish the outer boundaries of the patch. When raking an asparagus patch in the spring, it's best to be delicate and careful that you don't disturb the grounds with a rake. I looked carefully to make sure no spears were coming up through the soil, but I still tried to be careful with the rake because I could have missed some amongst all the dead grass and other weeds. I've become enamored with Charles Dowding's no-dig method, though I really don't think he should call it that. After all, technically, he does dig when he puts the plants into the ground. But his point is not semantics. His point is that heavy mulch works to suppress weeds and make less work later in the season. I've seen that firsthand using leaves and wood chips on my farm. Dowding uses compost. Since I have a readily available supply of free, well, except for the time it takes to go get it, horse manure from a nearby stable, my goal is to keep a constant supply in different stages of decomposition. This pile was put here in the fall, and it was already significantly aged when I got it. I'm going to be using it throughout the gardens as weed suppressing, soil bacteria feeding mulch. I may as well get started with the asparagus patch. <laughs> When I dropped this manure here last fall, I was in a hurry. I was also trying an experiment. I put the plow on the four-wheeler and used it to push the manure into a tidier pile. That said, the ATV and plow aren't strong enough to move this manure very well. So the pile was not as tidy as I'd have liked. I'm trying to keep cleaning up until the boundaries of the pile are defined by the edges of the containment structure I've built. The grass here will need time to recover but it's likely to be incredibly robust when it does. Well, that was an interesting adventure. I was out here uh, mulching the asparagus bed and one of the neighbors who I'd never met actually, she went riding by on a horse and then a couple minutes later, I heard her scream 
and then I saw the horse go galloping by without her. And then she came running up the road and yelled and said, she asked if she could get a ride. And of course I said yes and jumped in the car and we took off. And the horse went back to her house, which is good, but apparently it's a new horse. And she said, I guess I just figured out why they got rid of him. So I, I don't know if they just bought her or just adopted that horse, but I'm glad it went home and uh, she seemed to be okay. I know nothing about horses except that their manure is incredibly valuable to me. Um, but she came running up the road and said, you know, she was just yelling that she lost her horse. And I'm thinking, sorry, I don't know what to do. Um, I've never been on a horse. I've never owned a horse. Uh, to be honest, they make me a little nervous. Uh, and that didn't help any, <laughs> even though I wasn't involved. But at any rate, something to mix up the day, I guess. Well, it's nice to get that pile tidied up. Kind of dropped it there and pushed it in as best as I could last fall with the four-wheeler plow. But it definitely it spilled out into the into the path. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys the uh, asparagus patch. It looks really great right now, but that grass is going to come right up through again, so I'll probably have to keep at it. And I don't even know if this will work. I mean, asparagus is pretty robust in terms of what it can push through. Uh, and what I would have liked to have done, obviously what I would like to have done is kept ahead of this last year so there weren't so, so many weeds and so much grass in there, but that didn't happen. So I would have liked to have waited until the asparagus showed itself and then done this around the asparagus, but the grass, particularly down here on the western end, was uh, really starting to show itself and it's probably already six, seven inches tall. So. Just wanted to bury it. I'm pretty sure the asparagus can come up through and I'll probably have to keep adding mulch. Also, when I first built this asparagus patch, I used uh, slab wood, long pieces of slab wood from the last time I had lumber milled. And it's starting to break down, especially on this side. There were pretty thin pieces on, on the south side of this. So I think what I'm gonna do is go out in the woods and get some, some cedar and line this again and uh, just keep filling it up so that it's topped off with mulch to the layer of the cedar, to the height of the cedar logs. I've also got these wood chips that I dropped here last year, also intending to put them on the asparagus bed last spring. So these have been sitting here for a year, almost a year anyway. So I'll probably rake those out and top this off once I get maybe another layer of manure on once the asparagus comes through. But at any rate, that's a good little lunchtime project. Mm -hmm. 